Morning. Try that again. Um, thanks, Caleb, so much for inviting me. Uh, it's really exciting to be here and participating in this event because, like Caleb said, we're our, this is our community, right? And that's the most exciting part. So anytime that we have, anytime that we can interact with our community, share and learn, it's, it's really a great event. Um, when Caleb was putting this together and he asked me to come keynote the event, uh, I was really flattered. Um, it was, it's, it's really cool to be able to hear, to talk to you guys about what's going on with this product in our industry as a whole. But then I said, well, Caleb, what, what the hell am I going to talk about? Like, I've got a room full of GA experts, folks that may be just getting into Google Analytics. How do we, what's, what's a keynote like for a product, uh, for a product type of uh, event? And uh, he said, don't worry, just do one thing, inspire them. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no problem. So I could like maybe try to levitate or, uh, so I said, well, what would be inspiring to a room full of Google Analytics users? And I said, well, maybe I'll show you some data. So I was like, wow, look at this data. Is this not like awesome data? So I thought, wow, that might be really exciting. You guys might get a huge kick out of seeing some great data. Uh, and then I said, well, you guys probably see data all the time and you're all really smart, so it's, you see great data. So I said, well, maybe I could tell you something that would be very exciting. So maybe I could tell you that I'm going to give you 100 custom variables for Google Analytics. So you're not restricted by five anymore. I'm going to give you 100. But you know, that's really not my job. You know, I'll leave the product stuff to Phil and the awesome team from Google to, uh, to make features and to, to churn things out. So I decided to ask my wife, because she's always right about everything, um, of what I should talk about. And she said, you know, people just like to hear what you think sometimes. And so I decided to maybe tell you guys what I think, right? what's going to happen to us. Because we live in a really fast time, and things change all the time, and products change, and the industry changes. So what's going to happen to us? So I came up with this little presentation called Break On Through, right? and I want to talk about how to make Google Analytics completely kick ass in the next 18 months, right? What do we need to do to really evolve and change in order to lead the industry, right? What do we need to do as individuals? What does the product need to do in order to stay current and not only stay current, but really advance and move forward and become a true leader uh, in, in, in our industry? So we live in a really, really exciting time, right? Things are changing. Um, devices, content, the way we live and communicate is evolving at an incredible pace. Um, the fact that I can walk to my grandmother's house, she's 99, put an iPad in her hand and let her flip through pictures of her great-grandchildren, it's pretty amazing, right, how far we've come. Um, even if I took Google Analytics away from all you guys, you'd probably still admit we live in a really, really cool time. Um, and that cool time is changing what we're doing, right? That t the, the technology, the marketing that's happening today, that changes our job. Right? There's probably a good number of analysts in this room, but there's probably a lot of marketers as well. Marketers, we're, we're leading the charge in how we communicate, how businesses communicate with consumers, how we push messages, and how people communicate together. So this massive change really is driving our industry of measurement and optimization in what we're doing. And we're lucky enough to be working with a tool that I think has a team committed to staying current that will continue to push and add features in order to um, help us do our jobs better and help businesses grow. So what has to happen, right? What has to happen over the next 18 months in order for Google Analytics to really, really kick ass? Well, first and foremost, the basics need to say to, uh, to get better. Uh, Google needs to evolve to help um, a lot of people be able to do analytics. How many people in this room are web analysts? Right, so about half. How many people are marketers? Yeah, you guys outnumber the analysts. Um, I was lucky enough to be in Athens last week and we had a room of uh, over 150 people um, and there were less than 10 analysts in that room trying to learn how to do analytics. We are the largest, in Google Analytics is the largest installed analytics tool on the planet. Um, there are not that many analysts out there. So this product needs to change and evolve to help us all do more analysis faster and easier. So basic things need to change over the next 18 months. Better visualizations, uh, ability to do more segmentation, easier setup. We need to make this easier for more people to do analytics. Now there's some advanced stuff that we're going to talk about as well, but in general, we need to help more people get into the industry. This product is a gateway drug. It gets people into data. It gets people into understanding what they can measure and what they can find out about their website users and their business. Um, but it truly is a gateway drug, you know, and hopefully I can take you through lots of stages of addiction over the next 20 minutes to show you how 
far this thing could really go in terms of helping businesses be more successful. Okay. So beyond the basics, how, how might we think about the future of analytics? And how might we think about the future of Google Analytics? Like seriously, where can this thing go? How far can this thing go? And there we look at what's happening in general and specifically with online marketing, right? That's what we're measuring predominantly. Online marketing, web presence. Um, we're trying to understand, are those things working? We're trying to look for opportunities out there and trying to capitalize on the things that we find in the data. So we really need to stay current with the technology as it changes. We need to stay current with marketing trends as they change and they evolve in order to measure those things and understand what works and what doesn't work. So what's popular? What's going on with online marketing these days? Just a few little things. Um, this is from ClickZ, uh, online, um, uh, they talk about online marketing and analytics. Here are some of their kind of top things that are gonna happen in 2011 for, uh, for uh, online marketing, right? So social media really takes off. I heard this thing's gonna be huge. Um, and 2011 is really, really, really seriously the time when it's gonna get bigger. Uh, there's a lot of talk that social now is no longer social media, it's the social channel. Um, we need to stop talking about it as this uh, entity and thinking, think about it as a marketing channel that we use to communicate with people. So social is really going to continue to evolve. No big surprise there. Uh, mobile, right? Technology. This is where technology changes. iPhones, iPads, uh, Android. Um, mobile is exploding uh, just as much as social. Uh, and they complement each other really nice, right? With location-based services and the ability to communicate, um, we're going to continue to see a lot of advancements there. Content consumption will change as devices change. Um, uh, magazines, books, radio, uh, sorry, all sorts of content. Radio, streaming, television. Um, uh, I believe Time Warner just uh, said that they're going to start to stream live television to iPads. So the content that's always been out there is going to be consumed in different ways. And we need to be ready to measure that so that we can understand how people are consuming it so we can structure it different ways uh, to understand it. Um, real time. Right? More and more data, faster, faster, faster. Um, I was once a big, big, big opponent of real-time data. But it can be very, very useful to understand what's happening right now and make changes on the fly. So we're going to want more. We're going to want it faster. Uh, and we're going to want to um, be able to make changes based on what's happening in real-time environments. We're moving into multi-channel. Now, multi-channel has never been a new thing for marketers. I guess uh, when the first print ad came out and somebody told their neighbor about the great sale of Dr. McGillicuddy's Magic Elixir, um, that was probably the first multi-channel word of mouth and print um, that ever happened. But now with multi-channel, again, the environment, we're in a data-rich environment between online, where we get a lot of data, and even with some of the offline stuff, uh, we can start to get more and more data. Um, Multi-channel marketing, uh, also called integrated marketing, is going to become a big, big um, uh, weapon that industries use and, and companies use to target us, right? to get to us, um, showing us different things online and offline in order to get that brand message into our brains um, to solidify their place. So we need to measure that, and it's a challenge. And finally, another one of the big trends for 2011, um, metrics continue to become more sh mainstream. And again, we're a community. You guys sitting in this room are definitely at the leading edge of this thing. Um, sometimes we sit in our workspace and we talk about data and we talk about measurement. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like, gosh, we're talking about the same things over and over again that we might have been talking about three, four, five, six years ago. But this industry, really, we're still bringing a lot of people into it. As fast as we're moving at the forefront, we've got 10x the number of people coming in at the back end that are still trying to figure this thing out and trying to understand data and measurement. So we need to keep pushing forward, but we also need to continue to educate uh, other people that are coming into the industry uh, about, on what's happening. So this is what's happening, right? This is what's going to happen uh, over 2011. This is what's going to drive us. This is what's going to change Google Analytics and measurement. So if we break that down, really it's, it's Three basic things, multi-channel, social, social media, new devices. That's what it really kind of boils down to, those three things. If I had to add one uh, fourth to that, kind of metrics related, I would talk about predictive and more uh, data modeling and predictive modeling uh, based on what we've done in the past. Um, this is really uh, an exciting thing for analytics. Um, to be honest, I'm pretty busy and I'm pretty lazy. Um, I don't want to do any more work than I absolutely have to. I want to do the bare minimum. And sometimes doing analysis 
takes time. I don't want to spend that time. I want tools that tell me what I should change and what the benefit might be from those changes. So introducing higher math, more, um, uh, more predictive modeling into tools that, again, is easy for all of us to understand will then help us react to uh, the technology and the marketing uh, as it changes going forward. So this is what's going to drive us, right? These are the things that are going to shape our future um, as analysts, as marketers. Let's dig a little bit deeper, right? Let's talk about those four topics. Let's see what are the challenges facing us and how maybe we can get around some of these things. So multi-channel, um, multi-channel has been around. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways to uh, put your message in front of people. And we really need a holistic view of what's happening. We really need that complete view of how are my messages getting to, uh, to my consumers, to my customers and my prospects. I need to be able to put all of that data together regardless of the channel I'm using to reach my audience. And we know about the online channel, AdWords, email, uh, display advertising, social. Um, we need TV, right? We need radio. We need additional types of data in there so that we can truly understand what's happening. And in terms of Google Analytics, um, I would actually call this a kind of a, a low-hanging fruit, right? We have TV in there as, as, uh, already. Um, Google has some other products. Uh, that we've eagerly been waiting for integration, but they have a lot of things that they can do to bring multiple sources of data together to help us get a more complete picture of what's happening, right? Because that's what it's all about. Um, you know, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but it's very rare that you send someone an email and instantly you've got a customer for life. Uh, the sales process can take time. And that time and that measurement requires a lot of different data. We need to pull that data together. We need to mix it all up. And again, we need to do it in a way that everyone can understand, and that's easy for us to, uh, to uh, make decisions based on. And another type of data that we also need to start thinking about, not only is data about the messages that we're putting out there and the marketing that we're doing, but the people that, we, that buy from us, our customers and our prospects. Right? Who are these people? This is an incredibly valuable source of data. Why? As analysts, we measure behavior. We measure what people do. Okay? And behavior is a great predictor of what's going to happen in the future. You bought a camera from me. Oh, well, maybe I should try to market to you some uh, camera cases or lens cleaner or things like that. Knowing that is a huge, huge benefit when we, when we start to look at the data and try to create other uh, new types of marketing to reach out to people. So we need to start thinking about uh, individual visitor data. And we'll talk about that a little bit more and maybe uh, some ideas of, of getting that into analytics. So if we're going to move into multi-channel, if we're going to start to mash up all this data, if, if Google tackles this challenge and starts to put it all together, it's going to lead to uh, our ability to look at multi-channel uh, uh, marketing attribution. Right? And this is definitely a hot topic. It kind of ebbs and flows. Right now we're at a peak where a lot of people are talking about it. Um, but attribution is, uh, is something that we need to conquer. Right? Attribution is how do I understand all of my different marketing activities and how they influence behavior, right? So if you see a display ad, if you uh, get a, an email, you do a paid, and you see an ad for paid search, how do all of those things over time change you and make you buy from me? We need to start to, to answer that question. And it's not easy, right? Um, I think the reason why we haven't been able to measure this uh, process is because businesses really haven't tackled it seriously. Right? Nobody has a clear way to model attribution. Right? All of these things lead to money, but who gets credit? Right? Who gets credit for all of this, this revenue that's coming in? How many people here have a marketing attribution model in play at their organization? You guys are awesome, both of you. <laughs> Just to give you some perspective, I know you're data nerds. There's two, and there's 160 people in this room, probably a little bit more. So not a lot. Right? Again, another opportunity to lead the industry. Right? But businesses need to have some input here. Is it better to do an attribution model based on equal weighting? Let's give everyone credit. Let's give all the traffic sources credit for those things that led to conversion. Or maybe we only do some type of model where we just uh, give credit based on what we're spending. Right? So if we're spending money on paid search and we're spending money on email marketing, we'll give them all the credit. I think this is why we don't have attribution modeling in a lot of our tools because businesses haven't really tackled it seriously and haven't come to grips with what the models might be. But this is something that we definitely need to understand better. And the problem is, if you look at attribution modeling, we could quickly fall into this scenario that's very similar 
to click path reporting. If anyone's ever done any click path reporting in any analytics tool, right? If you give if you try to measure the path of 10,000 people through a website, you might have 9,000 different paths. If you try to measure the experience of 1,000 different customers and all the marketing messages they see, you might have 900 different paths through marketing. So what we really need to do is tackle this in such a way that maybe we're looking not at the past, but what are the influential types of uh, activities, right? Is it email that appears in every path? Is it uh, paid search, right? What are the influencers? So this is going to be a really important thing to, to, to understand, but a very, very difficult challenge, right? Because it's, it's based a lot on individual visitors and their behavior, which we're all kind of crazy. So we all do things differently, right? So this is something that I think, again, 18 months we're going to be tackling. Um, now, part of this new path is social media. You guys heard of social media? Again, it's going to be huge. There's this thing called Facebook. I guarantee you it's going to work. Um, go invest in them. Um, and, and social, you know, the social's challenging, right? Social's challenging. It's moving so fast. Everyone's doing it. It has a lot of momentum. In terms of measurement, we're kind of just hanging on for the ride. And we can do some things, right? We can track where people come from in terms of social campaigns. We can easily identify, um, did you come from a tweet? Did you come from a Facebook, uh, a post on Facebook? Um, did you maybe click on something that was in, my, uh, in YouTube? So we can, we can do some tracking. We can understand at a site level what people are, where people are coming from. So if we're disseminating our message through the social channel, we can do things in Google Analytics today to identify those people where they came from and maybe even understand the value of, of, um, uh, of them to our business. We can also do things like tracking how people interact with the social aspects of our websites, right? If you can like something, if you can tweet something, if you can share something, we can measure those things as well. So, we can do a few different things, but social is so much more than that, right? There's a lot of other tools out there that are talking about maybe not the outcomes that are happening on our website, but the social community that our customers and potential customers might be living in, right? The circles that they live in, the people that they communicate with, and how they interact out there, right? There's, you know, things like Clout, Twitalizer. There are tools out there that are starting to approach that question about how are we influencing our community and uh, who the influences are there. But how does that turn into money? How do we go out there and identify opportunities in those groups? How do we identify overlap in conversations and, and say, ah, this is a business opportunity for me? You know, it's, it's more complicated than identifying an influencer, sending them a free coffee maker and saying, hey, try this out and then tell everyone else in the world how great our coffee is. It's going to be a lot more complicated than that. And we need to figure that out, okay? And again, because social is moving so fast and because there is um, so much disparity in what's being measured, putting social data into a tool like Google Analytics would do go a long way to standardize things and educate a lot of people uh, on what social measurement should be and how it can benefit a business. So this is a tough one. And again, I, I expect that this is a challenge that Omniture announced last week that they're doing something uh, with social media and, and their new version of uh, their product. Um, it's a pretty hot topic. And again, it's all about how do we extract value from the conversations and from that community. And once we get into social media, we start talking about real individual people, right? Us. Everyone here do Twitter? How many people are tweeting? Just a few. Go easy on me, please. Um, uh, but it's real people. And we're going to bump into this problem of singularity or individual visitor tracking. Uh, this is something I mentioned earlier when we uh, discussed uh, multi-channel. Right? We're going to get into this place where we're going to want to see individuals. We're going to want to understand all of the people that come to our website. And we're going to want to understand maybe what are they saying on Twitter? What are they doing on Facebook? What was their purchase history? And this is a slippery slope. Uh, two reasons, right? First, from a purely tracking perspective, we're talking about trying to identify an individual person. We have enough problems identifying people across devices with cookies. Now how am I going to supposed to identify an individual across social channels and devices? Oi, it's a lot of work, right? So it's a primary key issue. How do I how do I put a little RF chip in your brain so that no matter what you do, I can pick you up and understand and track you? It's going to be a slippery slope. The other thing is um, 
not only the tracking part of it, but there's a lot of legal implications, especially for a company like Google, um, who values the privacy of its users a lot. Um, the way that they tackle this could be very interesting. So um, one thing I will say here, if, uh, if you haven't heard, they actually are introducing legislation, I think it is today, about tracking. Um, uh, so it is becoming a bigger and bigger issue. Uh, so you should be aware of that. It's going to have to be done in a very, very diplomatic manner where we can track uh, people anonymously, but yet still have access to potentially what they've done in the past. It's going to be helpful, right? Um, it's going to be helpful. We just need to go at it the right way. So people, we need to get down in devices, right? This is something uh, that I kind of mentioned this morning uh, earlier when we talked about um, it being an exciting time. There's a lot of different stuff out there. Our ability to consume content has really evolved. Um, I see, I actually see a lot of iPads in here. You're lucky enough to have an iPad too. I want one. Um, but our ability to consume content across all of these different devices and measure it. Um, this is almost common, right? This suite of things is common. Um, how many people know that Google Analytics can track a Google TV? Yeah, the Google guys do. Um, <laughs> or what about an Apple TV? Okay. Um, how many people know that Netflix and all those other apps are kind of integrated into a lot of the televisions we get today? Right. So screens have brains now. And so our ability to track across all of these different devices, all of this different type of, uh, of uh, all these tools that people are using to consume content, it's going to continue to evolve, right? It's going to continue to change radically. And so that's really going to be important for us to stay up on because we need to, again, understand the behavior, right? These are different segments of traffic. People that use these things are different than people that use a laptop or some other type of uh, standalone computer. Their behavior is different. They should be tracked different. We should be giving them a different experience. We should advertise to them differently. We should connect with them differently. We need to measure them differently. Right? So Google really needs to stay current in what they support for tracking. And not only what they support, right? because we can do a lot of this, but they need to make it drop dead easy. Again, lots of people. Lots and lots of people out there. How many programmers are in the room? OK, wow, that's not a lot. Um, but you guys are the front line for implementation. And you need to understand how this stuff works. We need to make it easier for the people that don't have programmers, that don't have tech resources to, to implement these things. So that has to happen as well. All right, so staying current, marketing, technology, right? modeling, multiple data. At the end of the day, it needs to be easy to understand what all of this information means. And really, the best way to do that is predictive modeling right? and taking historical data, what's happened in the past, and creating models of the future to guide our decision making. Because we're busy. And to be honest, we're lazy. We need someone to tell us what to do. Right? And this is probably closer than you think. Right? Look at the tools that Google's putting out right now. Uh, the top is Google Analytics Intelligence. Anyone use this? Google team, take note, seven people. Um, but it's cool, right? It's, it's neat. It's predictive modeling, creating predictive models of our data and telling us when things don't meet those predictive models. The bottom screen track, uh, screenshot is Google Insights for Search. Anyone use that? A few more people, OK? This is the trend of a keyword. And at the far, uh, far end there, that dashed line, that's predictive modeling for that keyword. The one thing I've learned about Google and knowing them for the past seven years is they have some pretty smart people. Um, they can figure stuff out pretty fast. And they're doing predictive stuff. And it's starting to show up here and there in all of the tools that we're using. So the capacity is there to develop models and apply them to our data. Right? It needs to take the next step of, hey, tell me a little bit more about your business so that I can really create a good model for you and then maybe show you the things that you should change. Or let you run scenarios. Oh, if you maybe spend more on AdWords, you might make more revenue. I'm sure Google would like that. Or if you've sent out one more email blast a month, you might generate this much more revenue. Okay? We need to start thinking in that manner. right? And, and helping people just literally change and make decisions faster based on the information. We're almost cutting analysis out now. Okay? And so if we start to cut out analysis, then we're not doing web analytics. This no longer becomes really an analytics tool. It could become a content delivery tool. right? Because now if you have the predictive modeling and you can 
maybe figure out a way to deliver content to somebody's website, you could let people make decisions based on predictive models, flick a switch, and maybe drive new content to their website in real time. Oh, and by the way, Google does help you drive, drive different content to your website using this other tool called Optimizer. So the whole content delivery based on maybe mathematical modeling exists in tools already uh, at use by Google. So we've kind of moved away from really even doing analysis. We've talked about integrating multiple data sources. We've talked about creating models of that data to identify opportunities and then dynamically delivering different solutions in real time to different people visiting our website in order for them to be more successful at their task, which in the end makes us more money. So we're talking about a business platform that you can run your business off of now. So you sign up with Google, you get measurement, you can do your advertising through multiple channels on mobile devices, AdWords, all that great stuff. You can run display ads with, uh, through the DoubleClick network. Um, and we can host all of your content for your website, for all your products. You can tie your CRM system into our tool as well so that we can understand purchase history and demographic information about your customers. And then you can monitor some dashboard that will dynamically deliver the right message to the right person when they get on your website based on what type of marketing they responded to or where they exist in the purchase funnel. I don't know, I think that can be done in 18 months. What do you think? Oh, and by the way, keep it so simple that everyone can do it. Again, you guys are at the bleeding edge. I can't tell you how far advanced you are from a lot of the people that are out there. Um, we're lucky enough to do a program called Seminars for Success where we train people about Google Analytics. And a majority of the planet still talking hits, still explaining bounce rate, okay? But we need to move faster, right? We might as well just skip the whole web analytics part and just give people a business platform that they can run their business off of. Right? It'll save us a lot of time, a lot of training. But it has to be done in a very, very simple way. Okay. The last thing I'll say is uh, some advice that I got, and I think this echoes what <coughs> Caleb said earlier. When I was in college, I had an advisor, um, and uh, he was my fraternity advisor, and he would always tell us, leave this place better than you found it. Okay. And I think I've tried to take that message into my life every single day. You wake up in the morning, leave that day better than you found it, right? If you can, make an impact, make something better. And as analysts, as people working with data, we have that ability every day to educate, to share, and to help someone else, right? So not only at our own organization or, or our own company, but within our community, right? We have the ability to share. That's one of the things that's really, really special about the analytics community is that we're really pretty close. You're only one click away from everybody in our industry, right? There's 1,700 members of the Web Analytics Association. Some people peg our entire industry as 10,000 practitioners. Um, it's pretty darn small. You're a click away from luminaries like Eric Peterson, Jim Stern, Avinash Kaushik, okay? So get out there, educate, and try to leave this place a little bit better. I think Google's doing their job to push forward with this product and make it really cool. I think the next 18 months are gonna be really, really exciting. Um, and that's all I have to say. So enjoy Gage, and uh, I'm around. So let's try to catch up and chat. Thanks, Caleb.